Hello, my beautiful people. Not to worry, Matt is coming soon, I assume. <laughs> hello, 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 gorgeous people. Happy, happy St. Patrick's Day. It's going to be one of, one of them St. Patrick's Days that I'm actually sober. So it's going to be a novelty even for, to myself myself so we're, we're gonna wait for matt i just want to say thank you please don't forget to go subscribe to his channel um because you know we support them okay so please go subscribe to his channel uh like share and subscribe everything all the good stuff that you guys always do to support people as youtubers so please please go and do that um today Hello, Angela Cosad, Angela Cosad. Hello, hello, happy St. Patrick's Day. Yay, ha happy St. Patrick's Day, beautiful people. Uh, so it's it's gonna be a very interesting um, thing what's happening right now. So yeah, you're also sober, Mimi. Oh my goodness. I guess we're, we're growing up too quickly, haven't we? <laughs> Hello, don't forget to click like before you join in. And I want to take the time to thank the people who, who bought the super chats and the PayPal donations. Thanks for that. It all goes to the school. And those who bought the merch, you know, it's looking at Meghan Markle's merch that she gave. And it's actually quite crap. I mean, or somebody who's putting up a site. I think it's called Shop uh, American Orchard Riviera. But she doesn't have the patent yet. It's going to be very interesting to see. But yes, go subscribe to the Angry Bootnik, and uh, he'll be here very quickly because um, he WhatsApp me. <laughs> so we'll see. Let me see. Okay. So, anyways. Um, it's an interesting day today because Oprah Winfrey has gone. Uh, Francine Pellerin, hello, beautiful people. All of those of you who are coming in today, thank you very much for joining. Um, thanks for always being here. Um, thanks for following. So, yes, don't forget to click the live. Don't forget to go subscribe to Matt's channel um, and everything else, okay? Um, and then... Um, it, it's gonna be an interesting life. So as usually with Matt. So we're gonna, I'm gonna, while he, Matt comes online, uh, we're, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna talk about a few things that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Oh, here he is. Matt. Oh, how are you doing? Oh my goodness. You appear, your internet is spot on. Yeah, I mean, I'll, what is that, I'll, what you have behind you? Is that a shirt or a flag? That's the Royal Marines flag. Um, it's the, it's the core colors and the core crest. And I haven't put Ooh. the whole thing up because I don't know, because I'm just still moving in. I just lent it on a hat stand basically and left it there. <laughs> that actually that'd be such a cool background for when you do your lives, Matt. Hello. Hello. It's Matt gone. Can you guys hear me? Matt. <laughs> Hello, can you guys see me? It has Matt frozen again? Or is it my internet? Can you tell me if it's my internet? He froze. Okay, I'll tell him. Matt, you froze. So he's frozen. Okay, so he probably, he's frozen like the movie. <laughs> he's going to go back. I actually like that flag. It's actually very, very cool. I wish, you know, that's a good background for him. Uh, no need, you're here. That's all that matters. So Matt, Matt had to get out and probably he's going to come back in. Uh, yes, Maggie P, hello, the angry bootleg. I love that flag. I didn't know that that's how what their flag looked like. You know, and thank you, Ginger Grotius. Thank you. Thank you. I want to. Thank you all for your support, always, always, and for supporting my um, channel. Don't forget to subscribe to his channel to make it grow. You know, he's coming back. Don't worry. He's coming back. <laughs> yeah, here is here. Oh, my here God. Go. I hope this isn't the, 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 uh, the shape of things to come. We seem to have <laughs> having terrible connections lately. What's going on? <laughs> no, I was saying to you that that flag is actually quite pretty, quite beautiful. 
It is. It's a beautiful flag, the Royal Marines flag. It looks great. And that's the core colours, like a navy blue, red, green, and yellow, and then a core crest. Um, yeah. Oh, it's navy blue? It looks black. No, it's navy blue. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, my goodness, Matt. Well, thanks for being here, Matt. Listen, we're going to, I have so much questions. I have, uh, I want to ask you a few topics today. And if you have any topics you want to talk about, knock yourself out. Um, but I wanted to ask you, what, what do you make of the Tate brothers? Um, yeah, that's a complicated one, isn't it? Because I think from looking into them a bit more, I think that I was guilty of sort of jumping on the bandwagon. Like, the people that run the world now are so good at manipulating us and lying that you have to really watch what you're doing before you judge people because they quote mine you. You remember me telling you all about quote mining, where they just pick a little bit out of something you said? Um, they did it with Trump today, didn't they? It was all over the Twitter that he said, oh, there's going to be a What did they back. say? What did they say? All over Twitter today, everyone is going on about hashtag bloodbath because Trump said, if I don't win, there's going to be a bloodbath. And, and the quote man that, and the, all the mainstream media, every single one of them, Elon Musk tweeted it with a picture of all them like grain PCs, like with thousands of them. And they're all saying bloodbath, bloodbath, because they're constantly repeating the narrative that Trump's basically threatening people there. He's saying, if you don't vote for me, there's gonna be, we're going to cause a bloodbath. But if you watch the two minute, the two minute section, He's specifically talking about Joe Biden's letting in so many illegal immigrants. Some of them are gangsters and criminal gang members. And yeah, they are. People, the murdered people. So if I don't win, there's going to be a bloodbath. And they've spent the whole day making out as if Trump was saying, if I don't win, my supporters are going to cause a bloodbath. You know what I mean? It's like an outright lie. Oh, I saw Elon Musk saying, posting videos it. with the full context. Yeah, he said, this and is the, the full context. content made Trump look great because they just lie about it. And he's even quite funny. He's not the best speaker in the world, but he is funny. I saw your tweet. I saw your ex post. Yeah, because he got to the end of it and he said, the border's wide open. There's going to be a bloodbath. Like the economy's in ruins, crime's up. But apart from that, he's doing a great job. That's what he said. <laughs> so it was actually a good speech and it made him look funny. So they lied about him. And the point I'm getting to in my roundabout way, as always, is that I fear that that's what they did with the Tate brothers because. I did instantly dislike them, thinking they were very like crass and um, you know misogynistic in the way. But then yeah, I because you're listened. a little bit of a liberal, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I am. Yeah. 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 I'm young. I'm, I'm younger thing. than you. Your, your generation are a bit more sensible than mine. I'm technically like a millennial or Gen X, I guess. But um, no, no, no. I know, I know. But it's just I can imagine people are put off by this because they're very alpha male. Those two. Yeah, right. I, but but from listening to them, I don't think they're as bad as they made them out to be. Another really okay. good example of this is probably someone you're not aware of because it's specific to English politics. But there's a guy called Tommy Robinson, and he's very he was destroyed by the media for years. They called him a racist and a bigot and a Nazi and a fascist and all that stuff. And then I watched an hour long lecture he gave at the Oxford Students Union, and at the end of it, I was like, everything they told me is a lie. Like, he's not a bad person. He told you the story and he's like, my sister got like, my cousin got sexually assaulted by a load of Pakistani men. And I was talking about specifically about the grooming gangs that everybody in the working class communities knew was happening. And I wasn't saying everybody who's from Pakistan or India is a bad person. And I wasn't saying that at all. And they just paint him out that way because they lied to us constantly. So when I listen to Andrew Tate in long form on Twitter, He's not that unreasonable. He is very cynical, like a lot of young men are, because they've brainwashed a generation to hate old values, traditional values. And because of that, it's created this generation that is very, very cynical. Uh, I was very cynical until I met my missus. Um, she sort of changed me for the better because I was cynical. Like I've talked Aww. about this. I've talked about this before, you know, I'm not proud of it, but, but <laughs> when, I joined the, when I joined the military, I, I was very cynical uh, and, I ne and I used to, and I did used to cheat on my girlfriends when I was a young lad in my twenties, because they were always like, oh, you're always away from home and she's just going to be opening her legs every time a sailor walks past. So you might as well. <laughs> right? uh, and, 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 and like, I'm joking about it, but that, that's nothing to be proud of. My goodness. <laughs> 
because that's what they did with my generation, though. They, they made you think, like, the family's pointless, marriage is just words, there's no point in getting married, you might as well just live together, and uh, you might as well shag other people. Like, they did that to the, to, to the millennial generation. And then, you know, I met her, and she totally made me realise this. She was like, my, her dad was quite a philanderer, and she said, like, I'll I'll be an extremely loyal partner and I'll always do everything for my husband but I demand loyalty from you and when she spelled it out to me in such like black and white terms I really bought into it and you know since then it's it's I'm a confident chatty fella so I get uh, flirted with quite often you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna practice false modesty and think tell you that I think I'm an ugly bastard because I'm not um and 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 it's been quite hard like occasionally some really attractive much younger woman will bat her eyelids at me and I have to force myself because my plums will be like, this will be a good idea. And I have to force myself to go, no, that it isn't because I have empathy with my missus and we sort of made a promise there, so I'll live by it. Uh, and this is what's missing from the generation. It, it's that cynicism of a proper old-fashioned relationship. So Andrew Tay is a symptom of that generation who's been told. It's just words. There's no point. You can just live with someone and have a load of kids and... Who cares about anything traditional? Uh, so I don't agree with the entirety of his message, but I don't think he hates women, and I don't think he's a rank. Oh God, no! Oh God, no! He, he's just giving hard advice to cynical men and saying the courts favour women; they do seem to. The 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 women can manipulate you and get all of your wealth off you if they divorce you, even if they're at fault, and they can. Like, there's elements of that that should be addressed, like. To me, I've always said my my me and my missus have talked about this. My my opinion on how divorce should work, it, it, I can sunnyize it with you know I swear a lot, so I don't need to mind my p's and q's. My my ideology is if you fuck up, you fuck off. That's how I think it should work. So I think yeah. if if you catch your wife shagging the milkman, then she shouldn't be allowed to get half your shit. But at the same time, if you're the one who's philandering then she should be allowed half your shit. I think there should be like rules to divorce. So it's like, if, you, if you're if you the one that's provably the, the bad uh, actor in the relationship, you do get stitched up by the courts. I think that'd be much fairer. But because of the way the system works, like there's Fathers for Justice in the UK. have done a lot of campaigning saying how like men get mistreated by the courts when they try and get access to the children if they have a yeah. divorce. And, and Andrew Tate is, uh, is a... You know, a figurehead for that generation, cynical men who've had bad relationships and have been, you know, abused. Yeah, also, you know, because I think he was responded because let's not forget. Okay, you, I think you know a little bit about my history. I, my ex husband used to beat the crap out of me. Like, I mean, I ended in the hospital with broken arms, legs, my, my head. I have 14 stitches here on my head. I, so basically, I would not advocate for any fucking asshole who beats women, a wife beater or a woman beater. However, Believe it or not, guess what I hate more? I hate women who falsely accuse a, their, a husband of beating just to get money or just to get sympathy or whatever. That I feel offended. I, I want to punch them when I like, for example, that thing with Amber Heard, yeah. you know, I was like, no. And people are still going on about it. And I'm like, no, she's an abusive person because she gives people like me, it makes it even more, it makes it harder yeah. for us, you know, or when a woman falsely claims rape, yeah. like these women with Andrew Tate, you know, they, they have come out and said, but the, for some reason, the, the is it, which Romania, where is there, where that, where, he's in he's Romania? In, he's in Romania, yeah, but he is. The Romanian in, government has held him without, without charging him for months on end they have uh intervened all of his stuff and they still the women that they're trying to accuse him of the women have said no he didn't you know we're I not know. so but they're basically saying, the they're same basically, thing with tommy robinson the, the law yeah. is an ass the law does what the powerful tell it to and the idea that it's you know she, lady justice wears a blindfold and rules without fear nor favor is nonsense like but I think he's reacting to that. I really do think he's yeah. a product of the absolute extreme of the Me Too movement because I've seen like people just look at what happened to Johnny Depp. Oh, shocking. You know, yeah. look at this, for example, Rain 65. This morning I watched a United States Air Force, Air Force officer give a speech in high heels and a skirt. I mean, that's where we <laughs> are. 
I mean, I'm sorry. Can you imagine yeah. the enemies? I mean, which what foundation? Rain, what rain, rain means there? When I walk into war. I'm sure rain means there, by the way. She's forgot to mention. It was the United States Air Force officer in high heels and a skirt who's actually a man. That's what she's probably meaning, right? It's not going to just be a bird. That's why it's funny. And that's why, you know, the whole world's totally fucked up because we read that and we know what she's on about. She's on about a big hairy ass bloke with forearms like Popeye in a fucking high heels and a skirt. It, it's crazy. But And this is what I'm telling you. Like, the real problem is it is all linked because... These sad bastards who don't have anything else to do are manipulating society. And I think you're a good example, right? Because your generation is a little bit older than these millennials. Oh, yeah. I love a man who's a man. You know, I yeah. am on board with Andrew Tate. I think that the man should be the provider, especially when you have young children. And if yeah. the men if the men can do it, I mean, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. I, I love when a man opens the door for me. I've raised my kid like that. Yeah. You carry my shopping bags for fuck's sake. I'm a woman. I'm your mom on top of that. But if you're a woman, you're a you're a dude. You're gonna be carrying the grocery bags. You're gonna open my door. You're gonna have to put all the groceries down and open my door, yeah. <laughs> even if I have nothing in my hands. But you this know is the thing though, and this is why I told you this. Is why I'm very political, even though I'm more of a like comedian than a serious person. I never take anything seriously ever. Like even when I was in <laughs> war, like gallows humor, like. I'm the type of blow, you know, you blow my foot off and I'll be like, oh, well, at least I'll save money on fucking flip flops, whatever. Like, I, I live for the crack and uh, my, my parents were the same. And, and all the couples are like that. They sort of lean into the gender roles. And when you're being a little bit misogynistic, it's just in good humor. Like, you don't mean anything by it. Yeah. And, and that's what what's does, missing. What does now. misogynistic mean for reals? Okay. If we go by the real definition, it doesn't apply nowadays. Never, never. You never hate women. This is what I'm saying. Like, some people hate women, but they're vanishingly rare. Me, I'll get called a misogynist all day long because I'm an old-fashioned bloke and I joke with my wife about traditional gender roles. So occasionally I'll be like, put the kettle on and slap her ass or something. And it's a joke. Like, she laughs about it and then she makes me a cup of tea because she knows I'll go out to work and I always pay for everything. And, and she cleans up more than I do. I'm a bit of a messy bastard because, like, I'm a bloke. Like, men and women have a different brain. We have different se sense of humours. We have different uh, sensibilities. And these lunatics act Not as if you're Dylan Mulvaney. Met. Fuck off. No, no, no. Like, which one is that <laughs> pervert that we used to talk about, Matt? Which one is that pervert on TikTok that we used to talk about? No, I don't oh, no. You're running about Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey fucking, what's his name? The one with the teeth. Yeah, a, a proper <laughs> weirdo. Name? Jeff Star? Jeffrey Teeth. Jeffrey Teeth. Someone... Was it ja Jeffrey Star? I don't know his surname. Jeffrey Summit. Yeah, creepy as fuck. Like, proper. Like, that bloke has got sex pests so, written So all you over see, people like him create Andrew Tate's. Because real men feel offended by that shit. I know, I know. And that's what I'm saying. So, to the short version is Andrew Tate is a very old fashioned bloke. Some he's too cynical about relationships, but he's not a bad person, and I don't think he hates women. He's just guarded, and he's telling young lads, "Listen, you have to be on your guard in this day and age because the system is set up to benefit women. If you're a bloke and a woman, think of that. I read about some fat bird in England who's accused some at like four different men of rape." Jeffrey, Jeffrey Marsh. Marsh. That's it. I always think Jeffrey Dahmer because he reminds me of that fucker. <laughs> well, he does, doesn't he? <gasps> yeah, proper weird. Fucking creepy but, asshole. You oh. know, and that's what I'm saying. And, and this is why I keep going back to, because me, I'm, I'm a sort of root cause type of guy. You don't treat, and that's what I do professionally, right? It's like, you don't treat the symptoms. You get to the root cause. And the root cause of all of these problems is still this Marxist, collectivist, commie ideology. Because it spreads out of everything. Think about it. If, if, you, if you think I'm rambling here, it's definitely linked. Because they're collectivists. They always paint everything with a big brush. They say men, women, people of colour, LGBTQ plus I community. As if they all think the same. As if there's not a single bloke in the world who sucks cocks and goes, I fucking love Donald Trump. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> they're out there. <laughs> and, and these lunatics these lunatics collectivize everything so it makes these young men who are cynical 
do the same thing. They collectivize women. They have one bad experience with a woman and they go bitches. And then they start being ridiculously cynical and treating them all like shit. And it's this mindset they're getting them as children to collectivize everyone that makes them easy prey for people like Andrew Tate, who might take it a little bit too far. Like you're yeah, but an Andrew example. Tate, you know what? You know what? Matter, wait, sorry, but Andrew Tate also advocates and tells men, "Be a man. Take care of your woman. You know, yeah. y- y- why is your woman paying for this? If I'm taking out a woman, I am taking out a woman. You know, yeah. you're not yeah. a man when you're when you allow your woman to pay for you. That means you're not man. I mean, I love the way he he calls out men too. It's yeah, like, exactly. what is this yeah. shit about me? Uh, my woman paying for 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 have you know? Because I just see, I just saw Merca say, my husband wants me to pay for everything. Get a new husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I would. What a sad bastard. And that's the thing, like, you know, it's it's a trade-off. I'm happy to pay for everything because my missus is a good egg and she cooks for me and she cleans up and she's fucking sound. So you, you do your part. But this is what I'm saying. You can tell the difference between the generations, right? Oh, your yeah. Gener- your generation is more um, immunized against collectivism because you're not all commie fucks. And when you got beat up by your ex-husband, you didn't go, oh, therefore all men are scum. Oh, no, no, no. I know he wasn't. No, no, it's that one guy, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But because of this, the root cause is the commie ideology. Because now a young man gets fucked over by a woman and he's like, all right, all women are bitches. And it's like, they, no, 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 oh, I no. knew he was the asshole. I knew he was the asshole. Yeah. I mean, there was, Just, I'm not gonna, because I know there's decent men everywhere. I yeah. mean, it's, I don't know if it's my generation, Matt, but I also think it's just, common sense but it seems that this generation they don't have any common sense because they're easily led down a path by mainstream media and mainstream media they have i really i'm not i'm not into i hate when i call it conspiracy theories but because this these things were called before reasonings they were called musings they were called wondering things that were you know but now it's a conspiracy theory if you dare question the mainstream narrative if you question the mainstream narrative you're a conspiracy theorist no and we know why don't we here and as I said, I know I always hate the word. Like I was like, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but that's them. It's because the CIA come up with these words, and as soon as you start getting close to the truth, they go conspiracy theorist to try and rubbish you. But now I'm in the ripe old age of 44. I'm like, holy shit! You can't keep calling them conspiracy theorists when they're right about everything all the time, and and, and that's what I'm saying. So I ignore the word. <coughs> Generally, they're right, uh, and this I mean is another good example, like the, of the dozens we've seen in the last few years. They say it's a right-wing conspiracy theory that the teachers are indoctrinating kids, right? And this is what I'm saying about this collectivism. This generation's all fucked up and they're all mentally ill and they're all depressed and suicidal and anxious and they don't trust women and the women don't trust the men. It's on purpose. There was a story yesterday. I'm going to make my next video about this because it astounded me, right? The story on The Independent yesterday that said one in four Gen Z are LGBTQ one in four and i was like they definitely aren't so don't tell me it's a it's a right-wing conspiracy like actual numbers you just know by common sense everyone knows someone who's gay i play uh, games with a gay bloke who's married to a man i've got a couple of friends who are gay common sense tells me roughly it's probably about one in every like 25 people maybe like you're just born that way and you're gay it's the way you are the idea that one in four people are gay is ludicrous. And now these are young kids are all identifying as LG- one in four LGBT now. They aren't. They're being brainwashed. They've told them, force yourself to get into cock and you'll be cool and you'll be different. Everybody will think you're- it's trendy. They've made it fashionable. Uh, and these no wonder they're depressed. Because let me tell you, as a straight man who, who is into women, nothing would depress me more than having to suck another man's balls every morning before I went to work. <laughs> So now you know what we have to put up with. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, of course they're depressed. They don't know what's up and down. They don't know what they are. They don't know whether they're a man or a woman or whether they're gay or straight. It's like they've done it on purpose, and it starts in school. Definitely. Matt, Matt I mean, the insanity that, that a man, a hairy, burly man. Go, you know what? I saw this video of, of a father. He takes his uh, six-year-old little girl to the bathroom. So he's given advice to all the fathers to go and check the bathroom before they allow the little girls to go in on there. Um, and I mean, in one of the videos, suddenly this 
big trucker, I mean, like like a 300 pounder trucker comes out of the little girl's bathroom. Oh and my you God. can and and uh but he identifies as a woman. Oh, I wouldn't fly it wouldn't fly where I live. There's no way. They'd be lining up to slap him if it was in my hometown. I'd have to drag me dad off him. This is the thing, and, and, and as Rain says, just leave them alone. Everything they say is a lie. And this is why I got all political when I'm more of a comedy-minded type of chap. I like to joke about everything, but they force you to get political because they ram it down your throat constantly. Sometimes in this day and age, they physically ram it down your throat, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but like, the, they are ramming it down your throat. The, 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 the reason they managed to sell this one is because they've said, if we don't tell kids, little kids all about gays and lesbians and all this, then they'll grow up to hate them. And I was like, hang on. We know that's not true because we didn't get taught that and we don't hate them. I was not taught about sex until I was about 12. I think the common sense, you know, back when the world was sane in the early 90s, the common sense approach was you talk to kids about sex when they roughly get to the age of puberty because before that they don't care of any interest in sex and stuff. So they leave it until you're about 12. And then they started doing sex education and we were like, oh, okay then. And then they tell us a little bit about it and say some people are gay and you go, fair enough. They don't start doing that shit when you're fucking six. And no, nobody in my generation grew up to go, you know what, I despise gay people. It didn't happen. So the idea that you have to tell little kids about blokes sucking each other off is preposterous. Uh, and it's just oh, self-evidently God. wrong. And it's because they want to indoctrinate them and they want to tell them all. Oh, if you can. But just have you seen? Have yourself. you seen Matt? Have you seen this video of now some schools are having this? Um, these trans do pole dancing to preschoolers. Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Sick shit, isn't it? it? They shouldn't be watching that stuff. And I'm not, and I'm not homophobic in any way. But leave it until they're old enough. It's common sense. It, this is why I keep saying it's not rocket science. This stuff's been common sense for decades. It's the wisdom you get on your granddad's knee. You just know what's right. And we know that kids are not qualified to make hard decisions. That's why we've always said kids can't smoke, kids can't drink, kids can't vote, kids can't drive. The idea that kids should be allowed to decide what fucking gender they are on a whim because a commie teacher's brainwash them every day is ludicrous. And these people should be in, they should be getting charged. It's child abuse. I've seen some Hollywood yeah, executive is. who's got like three daughters and they all identify as men and they're all trans. I was like, what, all three of them? You really think that's... Because again, I'm not denying that trans isn't a thing. And they always use the extremist arguments to try and paint everyone. So what they say is if you deny any of it, you deny all of it. And if you have my opinion, you hate gay people, which you definitely don't, or you don't think trans can happen, definitely don't they paint these lies about you but my point is again use the common sense gender dysphoria is a thing but it seems to be vanishingly rare because it is a pretty big disorder and it's probably like one in every thousand people or something and you're That's telling me that some horrible. woman has got three kids who all say the trans men all three of them, and that's not child abuse. Like it's mathematically impossible. Yeah. And apparently now in some hospitals in the states, you can't. The doctors cannot declare whether it's a female or a male. It has to be gender fluid. <laughs> yeah, I told you. I told you. I seen. I the mean, meme you heard that. that, right? Did you yeah. hear that? Yeah, and I seen the meme about it, and it's a doctor holding a baby out to a couple, and he says, "I don't know what it is, but it's got a cock." <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I just want to say hi to Claudia Salas and thank you for your service. You guys know that Matt is a veteran, a real one, not like Prince Harry. Okay, so <laughs> we got to thank him for his service, guys. You should really display that flag. I wonder how it looks really pretty. I wanted to ask you something because talking a little bit about the royal family, I just wanted to touch upon the thing that I am absolutely blown away, Matt, about the online abuse for Princess Catherine, a woman oh, who shocking. is... No, a woman. I mean, I saw Kim Kardashian on my way to on my way to find Kate. And it's so funny. Kingsley Schofield left a really savage message. Uh, you don't run in the same circles, hon, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. But um, it is it is it is, you know, I don't know about you, but, but I sure as hell know this in the United States or at least Canada. 
if you are on medical leave, if you're working for a company, for example, and you are on medical, official medical leave, you hand in this slip to your company, right? Let's say that you're, you're supposed to return on the 17th of April, right? And, and I can guarantee you that your company is not going to be phoning you, demanding to see proof of life, harassing you because they will be sued while you're on official medical leave. Yeah. Nobody's wondering where Harry and Meghan's children are, we ha who we haven't seen in two years, but they're wondering what Princess Catherine is after they, they gave a very clear time frame. I've been ill. And I remember I, I was on leave for almost six months after the last beating my ex-husband gave me. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. my leg broke and stuff like that. And, and I was supposed to return at a certain date, but he beat me up again. And so I had to leave prolong because I ended up at the hospital. So so my my leave got extended. So I, but what do you find that is so shocking? Why, why are they so brutally going against her? Well, because as I said, we, we, there's a war going on. It's, it's an unnamed one, but it, there's a war going on. Look how much fellow Americans despise each other now. There's a war going on. They just haven't named it. Your average right-wing Republican in America is more despised by the walk left in the United States, by the fellow countrymen, than they have for like foreigners. Like, think about that. A Democrat walkist in America feels like he's got more in common with a, a Pakistani hate preacher <laughs> than like <laughs> someone from his own country. There's a war going on, and there's sides in a war. And when you and when you're on their side, you're on the side for everything. And when you're against them, you're against them for everything. And this is just more hypocrisy from these people because whenever we say something that's self-evidently true, they'll go, oh, that's a ludicrous conspiracy theory. But when it's against their enemy, like Kate, because they've decided they despise the royal family because they're commies and they always have done, then it's fine to spread conspiracy theories, isn't it? It's not just fine. They'll promote it in the mainstream media. They can say whatever they want. So what I'm saying is it's just blatant in-your-face hypocrisy and it's obvious, and it's because there's a war on. And if you're on their side, they'll support you, and they'll ignore everything you do that's bad, and they'll and they'll support you through thick and thin, and they'll promote your lies, and they'll smear and hide the truth. And then when you're not on their side, they'll do the exact opposite. It's like it's obvious, it's blatantly obvious, and that's all that. It's double standards because they're against who they perceive. How do you think she would feel? Do you? I mean, that's horrible. I mean, that that's a lady at the end of the day with three children. She probably has some serious stuff going on health wise yeah. i mean why do you even think that the uk press is also i mean i've seen megan kelly good morning britain uh gb news they took to the streets and asked people how do you think that the photoshop scandal i mean these people heavily photoshop everything oh, but no. apparently I, I i don't i don't get it i mean why why do you think that this is this became such a big scandal when there's everybody does it but why do you think it's so massive? And why do you think the palace is not speaking out, man? Well, like I said, because of the enemy and what you might not know about the UK press is the vast, vast majority of them are full-blown propagandists for this walk movement. Like the BBC's walk, Channel 4's walk, Sky News's walk, there's the big three. Talk TV's walk, LBC is ridiculously walk. The Daily Mirror's walk, the Guardian's walk, the Independent's walk. The only thing I can think of that isn't is like the Daily Mail, the Telegraph. They're the only two that aren't like full-blown propagandists. So because they're 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 basically the the media the truth the media of truth for the the in this culture war that's going on, and they've been told they've been pointed at the enemy, and that's what I'm saying. If Meghan Markle wants to Photoshop an image, then they'll help them spread it and they'll help them cover it up. But if Kate wants to Photoshop an image, then they'll say she's a lying, devious, manipulative slut bucket and there's something devious going on. It's just two sides of a culture war, it's all it is. And I don't think it's that complicated, is it? If Meghan Markle does it, it's fine. If Kate does oh, yeah. it, it's awful. Oh, how dare, can you imagine if Meghan Markle had gone on sick leave like this? Yeah, we, know. we know she's hidden all the things about the children, Matt. You know, yeah. and, and nobody's questioning uh, or demanding to see the test the, the signatures of the doctors who deliver any of those children, which yeah. should actually be pretty, it's actually 
required for those children to be in the line of succession because it has constitutional consequences. So, and I'm really upset because the United Kingdom did away with the law that it, it was mandated before that the press secretary and two other people from the government office would witness the birth and give the signatures alongside with the doctors. And that document had to be part of that. But they got did away with that before Prince Charles was born. So Princess Elizabeth wouldn't, you know, be humiliated. But it was done with the understanding that they would honor that tradition and they would present the test, you know, the the the, the doctors testifying with their signatures that they gave birth to the children. Harry kids are the only ones who have never presented that. You know, yeah. and I'm not I'm not into all the children on I'm sure the children exist. But I don't know if, if she gave birth to those kids. It's really pretty awful. You know, I used to laugh about the people with the moon bumps and stuff like that. But after you look at it, and I am a pregnant, well, I've been pregnant. I'm pretty fucking sporty. Let me tell you, I played volleyball up to eight months when my kid, you know, before he was born and mm -hmm. he was born prematurely. I had to have a C-section. I had an epidural, but he, I've had friends that, that have had children uh, with an epidural that didn't have a C-section. But even then, the doctors are not going to send you back home within an hour or so. Yeah. That just doesn't fucking happen. It, you know, do and you the think only she Michael Jackson, like, though? I think she huh? Michael Jackson them and paid somebody else to do it. Probably. <laughs> no, I think right? she had a surrogate. I think she used a surrogate, which is fine. But the fact that if she did that, if they did that and they lied about it, they committed fraud against the United Kingdom. That's really the See, end of it. I'm, I'm more judgmental on that than you are then on that issue because I don't think it's fine, me. I don't really like the uh, the culture we've got now. I think surrogacy is like was started out as a noble thing because it's for women who couldn't have children and stuff. Yeah. But now... I've told you why I hate it, because it's the take from you and take and take and take. And then they try and memory hold how things used to be so that when they give you some crumbs back, you love it. Right. And that's what they've done with that. What they've done is they've created this new system where if you're really rich, too posh to push. Right. Yeah, oh yeah, like the Victoria Beckham. Yeah. To push, to push. But but I'm saying too posh to push because everything's been on a downhill slope for 30 years. It's gone from too posh to push, you get a C-section, to too posh to push, you pay a poor person to carry the fucking baby for nine months. Because that's what they're all doing now. Rich people just pay poor people who have the kids for them. And that is cruel. I think if you carry a kid yeah, for nine months... that's created a market for sure. That's created a market for sure. It has. And if you carry a kid for nine months, even if it's like not technically, but like biologically yours, you're going to bond with that kid and it must be hard to give it away. And they're doing all that work and all that carrying. Yeah, but and you know, that, that's the bitch. That's the bitch of it all in the UK because you know the laws for surrogacy surrogates and, and, the, and the UK, right? That the child belongs to the surrogate. Yeah, and they actually yeah. have to go, and if and if they're married, the, the the official father is the husband of the women carrying the child. And yeah. actually, if the woman decides not to give it up, you're done, buddy. Yeah, you're well, done. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. In America, I really don't like it. I, I, I genuinely think if, if there's a medical need or it can be helpful in that way, like it's a noble thing. But I don't like the idea that we just. Making it so, and you know what I'm, you know what it reminds me of, because these detestable scum that run the world now just stitch everything up. It reminds me of the way the our climate change, where they're trying to make it sell it to you. I heard AOC, my favourite sheep-toothed monstrosity. I seen AOC saying, "Oh, it'll be good when we introduce all these rules with climate change." Because just think, if everyone's like mandated a certain amount of miles in a year. Um, what we'll have a system in place where if you don't go on vacation all year and you don't fly all year, you can sell your miles to a rich person and they'll give you like $5,000 and they'll buy your miles off you and then therefore they can fly more and you won't have to and you'll get all this free money. And I'm like, yeah, but what about the current system where I can do as I please, you fucking slut? Like, I, I hate this idea where they try and take from you and then just convince you that they're doing you a favor a few years down the line. Like, don't tell me that it's a good idea that poor people have been manipulated into thinking it's a good thing to carry a baby for nine months, nine months back pain, nine months It's a risky hormones, thing to give birth to. Nine months people don't understand that. And then give the baby away. Don't tell me that's a good thing. You slying, filthy scum. Don't tell me that's a good thing. That's a cruel thing. 
to do that to a woman for nine months and then take the baby off her. And, the, and they've convinced them it's a good idea because they'll get some money for it. No, I understand. But let, I'm saying that if, for example, Meghan Markle, uh, for any health reasons, she couldn't have the baby and she decided to use a surrogate. That's fine. That should be made public because according to the UK laws, it states that children not born out of the woman's body cannot be in the line of succession. You know, it's very simple. It's very straightforward. It's like in the United States. In order for you to get a U.S. passport, you need to have been born in the United States or you have need to have become a citizen through, you know, like you did. Right, Matt? Yeah. Are you a citizen, dude? And even that pisses... Yeah, I am a U.S. citizen. And that pisses me off as well. Now you sent me off on another rant. That pisses me off. Because <laughs> fucking... They send all these legal immigrants over here and they don't make them get a medical. And I had to get two. And I came from England. I had to get a medical in London. I had to go to the embassy. I had to pay a load of money. I had to do a police interview. I had to do a background check. I had to get a chest X-ray. I got my bollocks felt by some weird Chinese woman. So basically, I got sexually assaulted for my fucking citizenship. Right? And then I came to America, and I had to do the whole thing again. And then they're just letting them in for the illegals, just walk in, and they've got TB and polio and fucking all sorts. And of they shit. get an instant credit because in New York they get credit cards now, whereas poor legal resident immigrants they probably if they apply they can get a credit they, card but they, they, if you're an illegal lie. immigrant yeah probably they from the mara 13. yeah they know that and then i read today the uh, i seen today on twitter they're going oh there's been a rise in like weird tropical diseases and all this and it's like it's because <laughs> of the anti-vax movement i'm like no it's because you've let in hundreds of thousands of ridiculous blokes from foreign countries with diseases and you haven't medically checked. Seriously, think of this, right? They said there's been an increase in AIDS in the UK because, oh, people haven't been educated. They're all they're having unprotected sex. I was like, listen, if two gay blokes and neither of them have got AIDS, they can shag each other senseless all week long and neither of them will get AIDS. That's how AIDS works, right? We let in a million blokes from Africa who didn't get any medical fucking checks. And then when AIDS goes up, they go, oh, you know whose fault this is? Vaccine hesitant. <laughs> it's like, no, oh it's because you let loads of promiscuous men in with AIDS. And now they're doing the same. I come from a country which immunizes me against tuberculosis as a teenager. And yet they made me get two chest x-rays, one in London and one in America for TB. And they're making me do swabs and feeling me plums and putting things up my ass. <laughs> That's really uncomfortable. <laughs> right. uh, but, but if you're a fucking third you know world so migrant. That you, you know what's so funny, Matt? That this illegal immigrants, they would cry rape or being abused if anybody did the things, things that sexual assault you went through, you know, just yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah. That's what I tell people. I say, I got fingered for my fucking green card. At least do that to them. Oh, God, I gross. <laughs> it's like, it does my head in. It does enjoy my head in. it as i said you, you just have to laugh you just have to laugh but it's shocking to have higher standards for migrants from rich western countries and have zero standards at all for people from the poorest places in the world is fucking ludicrous and it's the same in england my missus american Wanted to get a visa for the UK and it was a nightmare. She had to pay loads of money, do loads of medicals, do all. I was like, oh yeah, but if she was a hairy ass 20 year old bloke from Eritrea, she can just fucking walk straight in. It's preposterous. And here's your credit card. It's preposterous. <laughs> <Capital though>. one. <laughs> it's preposterous. On the, on the face of it, it's ludicrous. It really is the maddest thing ever. It's, it's literally like um, having a background check for the, the janitor who's going to mop your floor. But they're not having a background check for the bloke who's going to look after your children. It's self-evidently ludicrous taking fighting age men from the worst places in the world and not subscript putting them through any selection process, but then making a 19 year old Canadian girl with a college degree go through all these hoops is fucking ridiculous. How many 19 year old college girls from Canada have gang raped children or blew themselves up at a pop concert? zero but we'll do background checks for them but when some hairy ass bloke from somalia rocks up with a fucking machete in the back of a van we just go come along mate there's the shopping mall here's a credit card 
It's the lu- it's the lunacy. Everything we do, and this is what I'm saying, it must be by design. Because nobody is this stupid. Nobody is this stupid. It's not it, th- an old adage that I always liked in my twenties when I was young and foolish was that you should never subscribe anything to malice, which can be easily explained by incompetence. And I used to like that line because it stopped me from getting all bitter and cool. twisted. Yeah. And I used to like that line because it kept me getting bitter and twisted. I was like, eh, the government aren't evil. They're just thick. They're just stupid. Now I'm 44. I'm like, eh, they're fucking evil. <laughs> because there's no way. <laughs> yeah, there's you know, no that's way. the thing. Yeah. There's People that, try to no excuse certain stupid. things. People try to excuse certain things, you know. We went yeah. from Clinton, don't ask, don't tell, to now the admiral or whatever, wearing like like, yeah. like fucking high heels with that yeah. G string and, and and all kinds of it's actually and what do you it's make a, of this Invictus games, Matt? Because you're a bloke. You know that Birmingham is planning on bidding for Invictus Games 26 million pounds. For an Birmingham. organization that's just grifting, while Birmingham is 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 basically bankrupt. I mean, I think, I think Birmingham's the most diverse city in the UK, and it's an absolute sewer. And again, this is the thing: what you have to keep pointing out because this smear you, right? Everyone sensible knows that the reason these people cause a problem is because of education. I made this point on my live stream yesterday. Really, really poor people in sink estates in the northeast of England, because it's the poorest region of the UK, are a pain up the arse because the poor and the dragged up, and mo- loads of them are criminal, antisocial, hooligans, yobbos, pissheads, like all that stuff. It's because they've got no money. And then we import, when we say we don't want to import fighting age men from Somalia, they say, oh, it's because you don't like brown people. It's like, no, it's because very badly educated fighting age men, the high testosterone, the high energy, they're more likely to be criminals. If you were saying, let's import 10,000 university educated women from Toronto, we wouldn't be worried about it. But you have to be worried about fighting age men, regardless of where they even come from. If you said to me, we're going to bring over 10,000 fighting age men from a council estate in Glasgow, I'd say, no, you fucking aren't, because that's a terrible idea. They make it about race and ethnicity and religion to smear normal working class people. But it's logical to be cynical about these things. But why are they giving, why are they bidding millions to Harry's organization that's proven to be a grift? And why aren't the veterans speaking out? This is this guy called Johnny, John Mercer. It's not Mercer, is it? I hate Johnny Mercer. Yeah, that's him. him. He was drinking with, he was drinking with, um, with uh with harry uh last year in dusseldorf for his birthday he was having beers with him and he's insisting that he's trying to compete so that birmingham can bid can can compete with other cities so they can have invictus games on um, back in the uk and harry's coming back in may from they have hired uh the crypt at saint paul's cathedral I don't yeah. even know why Harry keeps coming back to the UK, you know, when he's not wanted. He's not but wanted I guess it's for publicity. Man. But it's, I mean, and this guy's there with him and he's satisfied with the security arrangements they've made for him and his wife. It's all corruption and lies, isn't it? There'll be some bollocks reasoning behind it. Like, uh, I, I would assume it's to get the money and then spend it on whatever shit they want. It won't be, they're not going to spend that 26 million on like vital improvements for the area. They'll just trouser it all on the, anywhere there's money involved, there's corruption and lies, especially with the scum that rule the world nowadays. So they're putting in for it because they want to trouser the money on 26 million quid. They'll go, yep, cheers, we'll have that. And then they'll, they'll stuck it in their ass pocket and bugger off back to California or something. It's just corruption. Uh, same as everything. As soon as government money's involved, there's corruption in there. And these people are just scum. Like, of course, Birmingham is an absolute shit all. And we keep giving bidding. them money and it keeps disappearing. Johnny Mercer says that they're, they're going to bid at least 26 million pounds 
to have Invictus Games come over. Out of that, they will create an Invictus Games uh, from the Birmingham, and they're going to have like 26 board of directors, each making about a million. Um, and yeah, and it just, and I'm sure some of that money goes to Harry. And I, I wonder if it's the royal family or the government finding a way to give money to Harry to keep him going, because you've seen what happened with the judge and the immigration documents with him. I really yeah. do. Um, you know what? I know you're a cynic and I know you said that Harry can come over and have you over your kitchen counter and have his way with you and, not, and we can watch I'm it live and nothing will happen to him. Yeah. But I have a feeling, I have a feeling that this is not, this is the year of accountability, not the year of redemption like Megan said it would be. Because the, the judge is not dismissing the thing and he wants to see the papers. I mean, what do you think is going to happen for reals, Matt? Okay. Nothing. I'm standing by it. Nothing. But the only something's only going to happen when you get real root and stem reform. When they dig it out, like you, you, as I said, I think you'll only get action after things get much, much worse. Maybe another five years, we'll get a Labour government. Um, to, you need total societal collapse before people do anything about it because everyone's too comfortable. As long as the internet still works. They've still got Netflix and everyone's got a full belly. <laughs> They'll let them do whatever they want. There's nothing's going to happen to him. I guarantee nothing will happen to him. The system. Well, they used to say that about Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein. And look. They're the sacrificial lambs, aren't they? The people like Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein. Only when you, you get truly so? pure evil, uh, who's done the most horrific things, then they throw them out there and they advertise it loudly and they talk about it all the time and they put it on all the mainstream media. Think about it. Why is it when they lie, the mainstream media cover up for them? But with Epstein, all of a sudden they'll tell you. It's because they're sacrificial lambs, so everybody thinks, this, that, oh, look at that, the system works. The system doesn't work. If the system worked... Hillary Clinton and about 50 other big high-ranking American politicians would be sat in Guantanamo Bay now. The system doesn't work, and Eric can do whatever he likes. It'll keep getting worse. Eventually, you'll get wholesale collapse, and then you might get a bunch of veterans actually take over the government in some sort of coup, like Starship Troopers or something, and then you'll get accountability. But until that day happens, nothing will happen to them. Harry can steal what he wants, go as he pleases. They were like, ooh, they're asking questions about his immigration status. Bollocks, bollocks. They're not going to take his immigration status. So he can do as he pleases because he's a insufferably smug ginger twat. There's nothing going to happen to Prince Harry. That's my uh, angry opinion for you. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, no, that you're right. You know, I, I did a video and I said they're not talented. They're privileged, which is different. Massively different. Because Harry... I really do believe that he's he's the British equivalent of Forrest Gump, but without morals. You know, like I really <laughs> do believe, I really do believe there is the equivalent of of, a, of a, an, an evil Forrest Gump. That's what I think of him. You know? <laughs> evil Forrest Gump. I like it. I like no, no, it. go for it. Knock yourself out with it. But he's an evil Forrest Gump. You know, life is like a box of chocolates, you know, chocolates, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's thick as fuck. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. Because he's a moron. I really do think that Harry... I don't even know why he hasn't been declared retarded. I really do think that the royal family interfere there. You know, <laughs> I don't think it needs to meet the minimum IQ to tell you the truth. You know, yeah. oh, so there's no way that there's no way on God's green earth that have allowed him to be a pilot if he wasn't a royal because he's a plank, like an absolute log. But you know, what, what do you make of his visit? His thirty minute visit. Because I've been dying to hear about this from you, Matt, because I want to hear your 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 take on this. This is the people, and you know what people say? Oh, Charles only saw him for 30 minutes, but he saw him. He arranged for his very yeah. ridiculous security, paid for his stay at the Windsor Suite at the at the at the airport, which is about five thousand pounds or something yeah. like that. What do you make? Mm -hmm. What do you think it's all is that about? Well, that's a difficult one, isn't it? Because ultimately, that you're making suppositions about a family. There, uh, I do think you know they always say blood's thicker than water. Like at the end of the day, he's probably Hewitt's, but Charles might not know that. He thinks he's his son, right? And, and you put up with a lot of. I think he is me. You can just again. This is what I always I tell you. I think so too. I think so too. I think I'm he's an an I, I'm an, kid. I'm an ENTP, right? And ENTP personality types just we're not emotional people. We we think with logic. <laughs> So I always tell you, like, you can be 
manipulated, you can be deceived, you can be brainwashed, you can be indoctrinated. Just trust your gut. I always trust my gut. This is what I always say, just common sense. And they'll try and convince you. It's in 1984, the final most serious command is not to believe the evidence of your eyes and ears. They'll never cho- They'll never manipulate me to not believe in my eyes and ears. And you can't fucking look at a picture of that ginger twat stood next to Hewitt when he was the same age and tell me that he's not his dad. I do not know. The and they all say it's because of the, of the Spencer gene. Oh, look. Yeah. And she was gobbling him off at the same time, wasn't she? She was shagging yeah, yeah. James Hewitt yeah, roughly. According to James time. Hewitt, according to James Hewitt, because this is why he sought out this manager who's now in jail and he's died. He was famous. But Alex Belfield had him on his channel and actually – uh, he said that, uh, what's his name, um, James Hewitt reached out to him at the end of uh, 1983 because um, he was dating this high-profile lady and he was worried that it was about to come out. This is right oh, before really? Harry was, yeah, yeah, Alex Bell, yeah. I'll send you the link so you can read it. And 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 the guy said, yeah, he, he contacted me and he told me that, you know, he was worried because, you know, he was dating this very high-profile lady. We all knew who he was. Because he actually, and he mm. he was very detailed. He met her while at the polo field when she was dating Prince uh, Prince Charles. Um, she didn't do anything the first year and a half with him, but when things started to fall apart, uh, and she, you know, she, when you know, because Charles never stopped seeing Camilla. I don't know why people think he stopped seeing Camilla, but um, yeah, no, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. And that, he did. I, I mean, that's why I have a bit of a soft spot for him in that respect. Like I told you, when I was younger, I hated. Charles and you know I thought cheating on Diana because she was super popular and she did nice things with the poor and stuff but as I grew older as I told you I got, I got more mellow about it because you realize that they essentially did a arranged marriage and they were trying to force like 19th century values onto like 21st century people basically or 20th century people um they were kind of pushed into it so I'm not judging them so the, the other thing you say things now that go against the narrative and they're like oh why are they hate man it's like it's not hate. I don't hate him. And I don't think he's the worst guy ever for having an affair or Diana's the worst woman ever for sucking James Hewitt off while she was married. I don't take that we had a forced marriage. So, yeah, of course, you're going to have a wandering eye. But don't make me lie about it. I don't hate or judge her for sucking James Hewitt off while she was married to Charles. But don't tell me I have to look at my own eyes and see this ginger bloke who looks the double of it. <laughs> We know what the funny thing is, the standards, you know, they say that, well, Charles is entitled to have a mistress because that's how they've done it all, the, all along. OK, you know, the old saying when a man marries his mistress, he, there's an opening for a mistress. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When his wife, when his mistress becomes his wife, there's an opening for a mistress. I wonder if people would would allow or would be OK with Charles having a mistress and say, oh, I wonder how Camilla would feel about that. You know, like it, yeah. it's like, you know, what really bothers me that what people say, like, oh, Diana was not allowed to have she was having a first student. Actually, no, she was 19. She did fall in love with this idiot. Uh and he wasn't honest with her, you know, and, and it really bothers me, the age difference, you know, that he said she she was a jolly 16 year old. Mm. Uh, you know what I mean? There's some yeah. things that are like, th- there's just some things that are icky for me, you know, that and and it's and what bothers me, Matt, is just like the same situation we have with Harry and Meghan It's the hypocrisy of it all, the double standard of it all that, it, like- you know, if we like if we were to say. If we were to trash Meghan Markle and, you know, Kinsey Scofield said something today, you know, why isn't the media creating a revolution about the two children that are, haven't been seen in over two years? Why aren't they worried about their well-being that their parents are always holidaying without the very small children? I mean, yeah. they just, oh my God, I was like I said, I've already answered it because there's one rule for them and another rule for everybody else. It's the same thing. If Philip Schofield is a walkist. So when Philip Schofield got found out to be lying to his children, lying to his wife, cheating on his wife, oh, booming, a, booming a teenager when he's a pensioner, <laughs> all that was fine. And he groomed him. He blatantly groomed him. He met yeah. him when he was about 12. But it was fine because, because Schofield's on their side in the war. That it doesn't need to be any more complicated than this. People yeah. look for like all these ex, ex, you know complicated explanations. If you're on their side, you can do as you please. If you're on, if you Owen Jones gets is a paedophile or a rapist or a murderer or anything, they'll run interference for them. 
But if it's somebody who's on the opposite side of their politics, like Andrew Tate or Joe Rogan or anybody else, they'll smear, they'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll do anything. So it's not that complicated. The the the, the play interference for Prince Harry and Meghan because Mary Meghan and Prince Harry are loudly publicly woke, and that's just the way it is. You know, no sense worrying yeah, about they're it. They're loudly publicly woke but while, while behaving completely the opposite of what they preach. Again, the double standards, you know. And yeah, I wanted to ask you something. What do you think of oh. Dan Wood? What do you think of Dan Wooden apologizing to Johnny Depp, which is not an apology? I apologize, I got involved. I don't but like I don't Dan want to offend him that word. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I'm a, at the end of the day, I'm just a working stiff so I can have an opinion on whatever I like. Um, I don't like Dan Wooden despite the fact a lot of people of my sort of political opinion do, and because of my gut, and I've told this to lots of people, like, I trust my gut, I don't I don't get indoctrinated, I, I, I trust my, my Me gut. Me too, I don't and trust I've him. And I've never really liked him, he just seems a bit slimy. I think he's, you know, another good example. That's the word, that's the word, Matt, slimy. A lot of people who um, follow my channel like uh, trigonometry because they get those guys are like openly free speech sort of advocates. I don't like them either. There's just something slippery about them. I feel like I feel like people like Dan Wotton and Trigonometry and them, I think they're just cleverly reading the room and they know which way the public side is because the public is overwhelmingly anti-walk, anti-bollocks because people don't like the kids' heads being filled with nonsense all the time. And I think they just read the room. I, I feel like Dan Wotton... Basically, most people who want to get involved in that industry, journalists, they are slimy bastards. And yeah. the fact that he's been a lifelong journalist, I just don't trust him or like him. And, you know, I suppose I prefer him to Owen Jones or anybody at the BBC, but I'm not a fan. I don't I don't like him. Me neither. Him. You know, it's just that it's just that, for example, I recognize an apology when I see one. That's not an apology that because no. he said uh, he's because he wrote it not once. And then when he went on Megan Kelly, he said, well, that wasn't me writing the the, the the headline. And it was just a headline. And it, it was you, you mother. I thought, you know, like you <laughs> doubled down when you I mean, I started pulling all the articles that he wrote. He's a white beater. And then he doubled down again. Well, well, what's his name? Um. Johnny Depp was going to try and you know one, one of the funniest things he said that well Amber Heard didn't want to go to trial so it's Johnny Depp's doing of course Amber Heard would not want to go to trial because she knew she was lying yeah well the, the reason I'm judgmental right is again I'm going off my gut and common sense that's all I need I'm allowed an opinion on anything I want um it's because yeah. I, at least in this I, channel you are mad I, I, I yeah <laughs> YouTube often doesn't think so uh, it, I, I think the people who are naturally slippery go towards careers where they wouldn't mind being slippery. I only ever knew one person in school when I was a, a kid who wanted to be a journalist, and she was slippery. She lied. She was manipulative. I think anybody who, basically my gut feeling on almost anybody who is a lawyer, a politician, or a journalist is they are self-serving scum that would lie to Mother Teresa in order to fucking further their own careers. So I'm very judgmental about journalists and I'm very distrustful of them. And all I think Dan Wotton is, is reading the room. He'll say and believe anything if he thinks it'll be good for his career. And talking shit about Johnny Depp was be good for his career and getting some headline things. So he might not even believe any of it. He might have thought he was perfectly innocent all right from the beginning, but it wouldn't have been good for his name and his headlines and his public footprint. So he said the opposite of what he believed. He's a journalist. It's like, you can't be angry at a journalist for being a liar and manipulative. It's like being angry at a scorpion for stinging. It's in their blood. If you want to be a journalist, nine times out of ten, you're a rat. And that's just the way they are. Like, I don't... I don't see why that has to be particularly complicated either. Journalists, like lawyers or politicians. Oh, You're good disgusting. at lying. That's the job you want to do, isn't it? But I don't. I know you have another life to go to. You have another life to go to, right? No, no, not today. But I do have to. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, because I thought, okay. But I wanted to ask you about Trump. What do you think is happening with this thing? Do you think that, because I, I mean, okay, you were right about Hunter Biden. Nothing's happened to him. Yeah. Oh, bollocks. I, I mean, I am shocked at this guy. And I don't understand why the American people are not angrier about this. But, but no, I'm serious because 
I don't understand it. You know, why they're uh, why aren't they calling and why this guy is so entitled when he walks into Congress and they're questioning him. Then he walks out when he didn't like the question. And and here we have Trump. How many losses does he have? Like 20 or 80 something or like he has Slow like Slow it's like 92 lawsuits or some shit like that that he's got. Again, it's almost like we're just uh, we're talking about the same issue like 10 times over, like because it's all linked. It's he's not on their side in the war, is he? So they'll hold him to a different standard. It is on the face of it, truly preposterous that Trump has got all these lawsuits against him. When you read some of the shit American political leaders have done over the years, even Nixon, who got yeah. caught red handed, didn't get treated the same way as Trump has. The coward of Chappaquiddick, Ted Kennedy, left a young woman to die. To die remember, Nothing yeah, happened to him. Can. Nothing happened to him. The, the, we've got the wor Hillary Clinton, the worst type of scum. Christopher Richards wrote a big book all about the Clintons. Like they are worms and none of them get prosecuted, but Trump does. Like I said, I can answer these questions super quickly and easily because it's the same answer for all of them. If you're on their side, you can do as you please. And if you're not on their side, they will find some fake trumped up charges to prosecute you for. It's bollocks. The, <laughs> on the face of it, it's bollocks. Do you think he's going to win if he, if he's allowed to run or if he makes it alive there? No, I think they'll cheat and I think they'll rig the election again. You oh, yeah. but if they do, I think there will be a civil war this time. I really do think because I don't think people are going to put up with it in the United States. This they is, clearly didn't cheated Amazon last time. Doesn't... They clearly cheated last time. I Biden know, but people were not. Oh, remember, you couldn't even say that because. Uh... You weren't allowed to say that my YouTube got shut down for two weeks. Because I, all I did was read a Time magazine article where they were crowing about cheating. There was an actual, because they couldn't help, they couldn't help but crow about it. So there was a Time magazine article talking about it. I'll have to find you it. I said I'd find you it last time, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's still out there. They wrote a big, long article because they couldn't help but gloat. And it was all like, here's all the people behind the scenes who helped us mobilize a broad coalition to stop Trump. It was an article admitting they cheated. And I read the article out on my YouTube channel and they banned me for two weeks, deleted the yeah. video and shadow banned my account. It's never recovered from it. Um, Isn't cheated. that amazing though? Isn't that insane? I know, I know. Uh, like I said, uh, this isn't, I don't practice self, false modesty as I've told you. I don't believe that my channel, that I'm as ignorant and unfunny <laughs> enough that my You're channel very, should be as myself. small as it is. I see myself the, I watch you. The, there's 99% of people who are on the platform who've got much bigger channels because YouTube promote and amplify their voices and people like us that get demonized and they don't advertise your voice. It's all linked. And the reason they're so arrogant and think they can get away with it is because they always controlled Silicon Valley, all the radio stations, all the TV networks, all the printed media, the New York Times is woke, the Washington Post is woke, CNN's woke, MSNBC's woke. YouTube's walk, Facebook's walk. Thank God for Elon Musk. There's one outlier now, but there never used to be. Last election. And he has total, money, which is worse. He's one coverage. of their club, right? He's one of the elite elite club. And I think, is he the wealthiest man on earth at the moment or no? He, he's, it's, he's either the wealthiest or, or almost because it fluctuates up and down. When you've got that much money, you're at the whims of the markets. So we're depending on the time of year, there's Bernard... Renault, whatever he's called, the guy from France who's the other super rich. Yeah, 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 yeah. Depending yeah. on the time of year, he's either first or second. But they're, they're both shockingly wealthy. Um, and yeah. like, like so I said, he really before, doesn't give a fuck. He really, yeah. literally does not. He he actually can buy freedom of expression. Yeah, but he's the only one who can. But anyway, what I'm saying is, back then they even had Twitter. So of course, you always ask me like, oh, why do they think they can get away with it? And I'm like, well, they can because they control everything. 1984, read it. It's like if you control the narrative, you control the world. And when you've got all the printed media, all the big magazines, Time, National Geographic, New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, MSNBC, Twitter, Facebook, Google, when you control all of it, you can do as you please. And that's why I still think they'll cheat. I think they cheated last time and nothing happened. They'll cheat again this time. I'm convinced of it. And I think it'll be even more blatant because I reckon Joe Biden's done such a bad job. I think if they left it to the polls, he'd probably lose by about 20 million votes. So I think they'll cheat again and it'll be even more blatant than last time. That's what I think is going to happen. How much do you think he lost by the last time? 
couple of hundred thousand. I think last time they played it smart because the, the narrative of the media has always reported it. Because like I said, I know way too much about American politics, right? The short version is you don't need that many cheating votes to win in America because the way the system works with the electoral college and the districting, all you need to do is drop three or 300,000 votes in 10 or 11 vital swing areas and you'll rig the election easily. Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton by 70,000 votes. That's it. If you really look into it, that's how he beat Hillary Clinton. It was 70,000 votes. It was, I think it was less. I think it was 66,000 votes. It was basically 20,000 votes here, 15,000 votes there, 20,000 votes. It was literally went down to like four swing states. And the, and it allows the media to push this narrative constantly where they say, oh, um, there is no evidence of widespread evidence <laughs> manipulation, right? And technically it's true. And that's the ingenious thing you do. You mix it. Well, with that's what they say. There's no evidence. So basically of widespread. And this is what I'm saying. That is true because it doesn't need to be widespread. All you need is 200,000 votes in five swing states and you win the election. So when they're saying, oh, there's no evidence of widespread, Google it. It's always prefaced by the word widespread because that's the bit that's the truth. There is no evidence of widespread because that's like, what's widespread? You could be like, oh, there isn't evidence of cheating in every single state. Therefore, there isn't widespread evidence of cheating. But there is evidence of bags of votes getting dropped off in just the right areas, in just the right swing states, and when they empty the bag of votes in the highly contested election, which common sense demands, what? Probably you'd expect the average. If you just grabbed a bin liner of votes and just ditched them on the table and counted them, it'd be like 60-40, right? Or 70-30. Like if you're in yeah. a liberal area of California, empty the bag out, you'd expect it to be like 70% Biden, 30% Trump. If you're in a right-wing area of Alabama, you empty the bag out, you'd expect it to be like 75% Trump, 25% Biden. But when they cheated and dropped off those bags of votes in like Philadelphia or wherever the fuck it was, they counted them and they said, oh yeah, 97% of the votes were for Biden. And I was like, oh really? And you expect me to believe that's legitimate? Really? 97% of the votes in a bag were all for one guy? And you're telling me that's not electoral manipulation? It's physically impossible. There's no way you'd ever have an election and one person gets 97% of the votes. But that's what happened there. And what do you think? What do you think? Okay. Yeah, because I saw the video of the, of the, I remember, but okay, I wanted to ask you something. Did you think that the election was stolen at the beginning or did you think that was just a conspiracy theory that Trump was <laughs> bitter? And did no, you come around afterwards? Conspiracy theory. This is what I'm telling you. You've got to believe your eyes and ears. Uh, just like you asked me about Andrew Tate, it's the same answer because I'm a reasonable person and I follow the evidence. When they initially said Biden won, I believe Biden had won because I'm not rash. And I was like, okay, everyone's bombarding me with all this information, telling me he definitely won. I guess he won. It's only after I spend a couple of months later, start really deep diving into it. And you see the citizen journalists and the Joe Rogans and the podcasters and the YouTubers actually breaking down the demographics. You go, holy shit, looks like they cheated. I, I didn't think he cheated originally because I'm not irrational. I, you know, I'm happy to follow the evidence where it lies. But they definitely cheated. Matt, how long did it take you to get your visa to enter the U.S.? I get, <clears throat> which visa are you on? A spousal visa? You enter like that, right? Well, I'm a citizen now. I've got a spousal yeah, visa. No, but how, when, you, when you first wanted to go to the U.S., you married an American lady, right? Yeah, it was funny that. I'll tell you a story about it. So she did all the paperwork for me because my wife's like my care worker or something. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, she said, oh, what we'll do then? I'll, I'll sort it out for you. And she just it would occasionally push bits of paper at me and I'd sign it. But basically it was the K something visa that you get when you're going to get married. And um, what's hilarious about it is they must be so used to these, because the immigration system's broke and manipulated. They must be yeah. so used to all these random swarthy foreigners just involving themselves in sham marriages that they sort of seem to expect it from you. And I was actually marrying a woman who I'd lived with in England for like six years or however long. Like we've been together for 10, lived together for like six. And she's like, we'll just get married. It'll make it easier to, to... I was like, fair enough. I goes to Dublin. I was flying from Dublin because that's where you get on the plane. 
And this American, because the Americans have their own special proper section in Dublin yeah. Airport. And, and that's why I went from Dublin rather than Heathrow. And I goes in there and they take me into this side room and I'm there with my suit on, you know. And then he starts questioning me about my marriage. And the bloke definitely treated me like I was like an Eritrean asylum seeker who just got involved in a sham marriage with like a, a Russo-American mail order bride or something. And he took me in this back room and he was like, right, if you get there and she doesn't turn up, you get yourself back to the American embassy. Like, I'll give you the address. If you th- if you think there's anything suspect going on, she doesn't show up for the wedding. All this stuff was good. You have to get yourself back to the UK as fast as possible. He probably started like berating me. And I was like, shit, I feel like I'm an Eritrean asylum seeker. Like, he probably didn't think it was real, the marriage we're getting. And this is what I'm saying. This is the hoops to make you go through. So it was probably like a year's worth of paperwork and... 10 trips to the post office. And then I had to go to the US to embassy in London and I did a, a medical and an exam and I had a long talk with an immigration official. And then I had to send them all the documents the police sent me saying that I didn't have a criminal record. And then when all that was done, then I got to the airport, get the lecture off the officer who thought I was a Somalian pirate trying to con an American woman into marrying me. And then I got to America, we got married. And then after we got married, that's when you apply for the different visa and we send a shitload of paperwork off again and pay a load of money again. And then that was done. And then three years later, my missus, as usual, because she's squared away, is like, oh, now you can qualify for the actual citizenship. And then we went through the long process of that. And then I had to do all the same shit again. And I had to do an exam that proves that I know all about America. Uh, And then I had to go to a big swearing in ceremony and a big building in LA. And Donald Trump came up on a video and was like, you're an American now. Fuck your old country. And uh, and then I swore it in. And <laughs> did they really? Back, put, did uh, you have to reset the Constitution? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course I did, yeah. And then they give you a little American flag. And uh, yeah, that's that. This is what your vicar says. Interesting that Harry could just go into the US from Canada <laughs> because it is actually quite a lengthy process. Um, exactly. Even up to what Mary, yeah. How many months was it? Like a year? Pretty much, yeah, or yeah. something. Oh yeah, it, it is going to be very interesting. You know, it's still. I wanted to ask you something. Did you see Candace Owens' thing about about Brigitte Macron? Yeah, yeah. And th- there's some funny memes came out about that. Did you see that one about? It showed Macron like his wife crouching down next to him, and someone had superimposed a cock in between her legs under I mean, her skirt. I've like... seen videos. Now they they have, because they had these videos when she was a teacher. He, she, but the, and she looks like a man. <laughs> I mean, what do you think yeah. of that? Because Candace Owens actually, you know what? I've actually gone after I heard her video. I saw her video. I actually went online looking for pictures. I mean, she could easily debunk that. Just present her brother their husband is literally gone, ex-husband, you know? And then you have, like, all these, I mean, no pictures of her when she was a kid. Not even one. I mean, I have pictures of my grandmother who passed away in 1978. I mean, <laughs> what do you make of that? Do you think we have another Big Mike situation here? I mean, what do you <laughs> I hope so, because I love all that shit. But, again, knowing very little about it, I'll just – my bog standard answer would be – um, I always apply Occam's razor, right? You know what Occam's razor is? Yeah, the 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 the, the, the most simple explanation is uh, is the easiest one. Is that the one? Exactly, yeah. And um, just like with the Biden election, where I originally thought it wasn't rigged, um, I'll have to go with the most simple explanation. Is he's a typical dirty Frenchman? He started shagging his teacher when he was in school. <laughs> that's the most. That's the most plausible and the least complex. So for now, I'll go with that. But I will be open to evidence, and I hope and pray that she does have a cock because that'll be funny. <laughs> oh my god, that's actually. But you know what? The things that she put out, and people are mocking her online because she's willing to stake her her professional reputation for it. You know, I'm like. Girl, you know, but you know, she she was hated with the George Floyd thing. I mean, mm. I, I mean, Candace Owen and the BLM, she was very outspoken and called them crooks and all kinds of things and said that they were thieves. The girl was right. Yeah, yeah, well, definitely about him. Uh, anyway, Paul, I'm gonna have to boogie. It's twenty. No, no, no. Thank you here. very much, sweetie. Thank you very much for coming and joining. And we have to do this again, you know. Or invite me to your channel, bloody hell. But um, but I yes, thanks, thanks, thanks very much. And um, 
you're going to see a surprise. I can't talk about it, but there's going to be a surprise interview, not on my channel, but Sean Adwood's channel about one of the people we just talked about today. So it's going to be fun. Sean Adwood managed to, to, well, I can say because he admit, ad advertised it on, on his, uh, on his, Instagram that he managed to get an interview with Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, the first interview after their second prison release, you know. Oh, yeah. so, All right, that is cool. That, is, that cool. is cool. So get to watch it now because it, apparently they talk about everything. They go on every now they go detail because I think apparently now they, they don't have to worry about what they say because they don't have to spend more time on jail. But thanks for uh, being here and, and and I can't wait to see you again because we love you. You know I'm a big fan of you. <laughs> Interesting. I always like talking to you because you ask me questions about stuff I'd never, uh, I'd never think about generally. Well, I sent I you that clip it. of that fat lady in the plane, didn't I? Oh, you have yeah. my permission. You have my permission to smother me with a pillow if I ever become like that. Please do that. Please. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what happened in the worry, plane? Paul, they, had to, I... they had to, they had to remove the passengers on the side to let her have the whole thing because she was that big. And the people were really angry because they had to be sent to the back. Don't worry, Paula, because I like and respect you, I will happily drown you in the bath if you get fat. All right, I'll do that for you. Because I like you. <laughs> Thanks so All much, right. man. Have See a great day. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, guys. Go subscribe to Matt, the Angry Bootnik. He's, uh, I love his channel. I'm actually a huge fan of his. Clearly, you can see that, okay? And I can talk now about... Um, Sean Adwood having Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate on his channel next week. So you guys just go and look at that because expect that it's going to be huge. And go subscribe to Matt, the angry bootnik on his channel because he has been shadow banned massively. Okay, so please follow him, show him some love and subscribe. It's free. And watch his, uh, watch, you know, I never get notified about his, his videos, even though I am I have the little bell to be notified. I have to be like stalking him, like Mega Markle stalks everybody to see if I can catch a live. Okay. So thank you very much for coming, guys, and have a wonderful Sunday. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video. <laughs>